I will get to chapter 14, the three modes of material nature, text number four. Sarva yonashi kontiya mortiyak sambhavantiya tasad brahma mahadyonir ahambhida prajapita. It should be understood that all species of life, O son of Kunti, are made possible by birth in this material nature, and that I am the sea giving father. Please repeat. It should be understood that all species of life, O son of Kunti, are made possible by birth in this material nature, and that I am the seed giving father. Purple, in this verse, it is clearly explained that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, is the original father of all living entities. The living entities are combinations of the material nature and the spiritual nature. Such living entities are seen not only in this planet, but on every planet, even on the highest where Brahma is situated. Everywhere there are living entities. Within the earth there are living entities, even within the water and within fire. All these appearances are due to the mother, material nature, and Krishna's seed-giving process. The purport is that the material world is impregnated with living entities who come out in various forms at the time of creation according to their past deeds. So the text again. Sarva yonishi kunteya morteyak sambhavantiya tasad brahma yamahadyonir ahambhida pradapita. It should be understood that all species of life, O Sanukunti, are made possible by birth in this material nature, and that I am the seed giving father. Maum Vishnu Vidaya Krishna Pristaya Buddha. Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tanamane, Namaste Saraswatunde Ve, Koravani Pracharane, Nirvise Shashunivadi, Paskatya De Satarne. Here Krishna is claiming that the world doesn't come out of nothing. For some people, this would be quite a disappointment. <laughs> that Actually, there is a person behind everything. And here Krishna says, Prada Pitaha Pitta, that he's the person who's put the living entities into the material world. In other words, things are ultimately quite simple. If we don't accept Krishna, obviously, to figure out what's going on in this material world is very complicated. Just like the modern scientists, some of them at least, they claim that everything came out of nothing. But to explain what that nothingness is, they have to write a book which is like hundreds of pages long, filled with mathematical equations to explain what nothingness is. In other words, they say, well, it's almost nothing. It's almost like the sound of one hand clapping. Does anyone here ever listen to the sound of one hand clapping? Well, that's good. Usually the devotees don't take drugs. So. <laughs> you have to clap it against the other non existing hand. <laughs> And Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, Yavat Sanjayate Kinchit, Satvam Stavar Jangamam, Shetra Shad Chetragya Sam Yogat, Tadvidi Varatara Shiva. That it should be understood that Yavat Sanjayate Kinchit, that whatever we see in the material world, both amongst the moving and the non moving beings, is only a combination of the knower of the field and the field of activity. In other words, there are the souls in the material nature, and there is the endless varieties of bodies that they're conscious of. Some of them are demigods, some of them are human beings, some of them are animals, some of them are plants and trees. But in any case, all we see is a combination of, of souls within different material bodies. 
and samam sarveshu bhuteshu tishtantam parameshwaram vinashava vinashantam yat pashati sapashati. One who can see the super soul accompanying all beings within all bodies and who knows that neither the soul nor the super soul within this destructible body are ever destroyed, he actually sees. It's not very difficult to actually see properly. We simply have to accept that everyone here is a soul, every living entity is a soul, and that there is a super soul. And he's a company to souls in every single body. Then Krishna says, Samam Pashan Hisaritra, Samam Vasti Tamishwaram, Samam Pashan Hisaritra, Samam Vasti Tamishwaram, Nihinas Yatmanatmanam, Tatoyati Paramgitim. The one who sees the, so- the super soul is equal everywhere, does not degrade himself by his mind, and thus he approaches the supreme destination. Samam Pashan Hisaritra, Samam Vasti Tamishram, Nihinas Yatmanatmanam Tatoyati Param Githim. So that's our problem, is that we don't recognize Krishna, and we don't recognize Krishna's part and parcels. We think that let there be no Krishna, and let me be Krishna. Let Krishna disappear and let me appear. Therefore, we don't like the fact that Krishna is in everyone's body. The Supreme, just like we try to imitate Krishna, by especially the leaders of society, by having cameras everywhere. They think they can imitate the super soul. that they can be all-pervading. Soon they'll put a chip with a, with a video camera in it and everyone. But they won't be intelligent enough to put it into the, into the heart of the trees and the plants and the ants. Let them put a video chip in the ant and control the ant. Then we'd be impressed. But actually, Krishna is in everyone's heart. And he's the one who directs everyone. Ishvara Sarabhutanam, Rideshe Arjuna Tishtati, Brahmanyan Sarabhutani Yantru Dani Maria. Krishna says that the Supreme Lord is directing the wanderings of all living entities, proceeded as if on a machine made of the material energy. Tamasharanam Tam Eva Sharanam Gacha. Sara Bhavena Bharata Stanam Tama uh, Eva Sharanam Gacha Sara Bhavena Bharata Samava no Tatsar Tat Param Shantim Stanam Prapsi Shasvatam Tat prasadam param shantim, stanam prapsi shasvatam. Tat prasadam param shantim. Tam eva sharnam gacha, sara bhavena bharata. Tat prasadam param shantim, stanam prapsi shasvatam. Surrender unto him in all respects, O Arjuna, and by his mercy you'll attain the transcendental, uh, uh, eternal peace and the transcendental abode. In other words, if we recognize that Krishna is always with us, it's not that when we want God to be there, he's there, and we want God to go away, then he goes away. When we need something, we call God, and he comes. And we don't need him, then he goes away and leaves us alone. But actually, Krishna is with us, and he knows what what we're doing, whether we're bad or good, so be good for Krishna's sake.
And he senses our desire, just like one, one can understand the flavor of a flower by smelling it. And he gives us intelligence accordingly. Savasthu chaham, vridi sanivishto, matakshmritira, gyanam aponam cha. So we want to remember Krishna, then Krishna gives us so much knowledge that we can understand his existence. So when we look at the sun, we'll understand that the sun's moving its orbit not by some accident, but by the will of Govinda. Lord Brahma says, Yatschaksha esha savita sakala grahanam rajasta samasta surya ashesha teja yasya gaya brahmati samrita kala chakro govindam adi purushang tamahang vijami yatschaksha esha savitas savitas savitura savitas grahanam that the eye is one of the sun is one of Krishna's eyes. That's chaksha esha savita savitora grahanam rajasta masta sura murte ashesha teja and it's full of ashesha teja unlimited effulgence. Yes, yagaya brahmati kala sambrita kala chakro yes, yagaya sambrita kala chakro govindam adi purushang tamahang bhujami that it's being maintained in its orbit by the will of Govinda. Just like the ocean is so vast that if the ocean expanded just a little bit, then immediately Dallas, Texas would be one big swimming pool. You wouldn't have to go to the local YMCA to go swimming. You simply jump off the top of your roof into the pool. But by the will of Govinda, the ocean is not increasing. Similarly, if we look in the sky, there are unlimited planets. They're all floating in their orbits, exactly on the t- in time. The sun's rising at its appointed time. The sun's setting at its appointed time. There is no need to wake the sun up. The sun comes up exactly on time. Even with all our so-called intelligence, we cannot duplicate the exactitude of the sun. Even the best Swiss watchmaker would have a hard time making a watch exactly like the sun. And yet the scientists claim that it's all by accident. But how can an accident be created with such intelligence. If you're on the street and two cars crash into each other and the police come and say, what happened? And the witnesses say, don't worry about it. It was just an accident. Even an accident has a cause behind it. Similarly, we can look around the world and find that Beyond the intelligence of human beings, so many things have been created. Just like if a scientist could make a male Rolls Royce and a female's Rolls Royce. And when the two Rolls Royces got together, they created little Rolls Royces. And you give them a little oil, you give them a little gasoline, and they grow up and become big Rolls Royces. That way, everyone can get a a Rolls Royce. You have a little. Yard where you just breed Rolls Royces. (laughs) But the scientists cannot do that. But Krishna has done that in 8,400,000 species of life. He's created male and female machines. And when they get together, they create little machines that grow grow up, and they create other machines. So who's the better scientist? The so-called material scientist or the big scientist, Krishna? So that scientist, he's in everyone's heart, and if someone wants to understand him, he gives them so much intelligence. And if people want to forget him, 
they can write volumes of books explaining how there is no God, how everything is so perfectly made by nothing. <laughs> nothing was doing nothing. And so its mother got disturbed and said, why don't you become something? <laughs> So, after hearing its mother complain all the time, the origin of nothing, decided, well, it became angry and decided to become something, but it couldn't become very much. <laughs> so it became something like nothing, but a little bit more. <laughs> and then one day, after being pestered by its mother all the time, eternally to become something, it became a rock. And his mother said, you're not good enough. <laughs> Anyone could become a rock. <laughs> so then it exploded out of anger. <laughs> and flew all over the universe trying to get away from nothing. Its mother, so it wouldn't be disturbed anymore. And then after flying all over the universe for billions and trillions of years, it got a little tired decided to settle down, and it became the Earth. And then it kept on expanding and expanding, and finally became a, a rock. Then it became a mouse. Then it became a sheep. Then it became a monkey. And here we are now. So if we look through our family album, as I said before, We'll find there is grandmother, grandfather, and great-grandmother, great-grandfather. And we keep on tracing back. Suddenly, we see this person. He's smiling, and he has all this hair all over his body. And Grandfather Harry. <laughs> Looks like an ape. <laughs> and we trace back further and further, and we find this sheep. And it's a black sheep. And now we say, ah, oh, that's the black sheep in the family. <laughs> <laughs> that everyone's talking about all the time. And then we trace it back, and we find there's a mouse, and then a rock, and then there's nothing on the last page. And there's a story of our family, how our original ancestor got angry and became a, became a, was trying to do something, became a rock and became angry and exploded, became a mouse, or a, actually what happened is the two rocks, they met each other and they fell in love. And they produced a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> which later on gave birth to a black sheep in our family. <laughs> and then the almost our greatest ancestor, most famous ancestor, Harry. <laughs> was swinging from our family tree. <clears throat> and here we are now, descendants of nothing. So we worship nothing because he has no eyes, he has no nothing. Actually, we worship him because we feel sorry for him. Because <laughs> no one else pays attention to him because he's practically nothing. <laughs> but we love him anyhow because he's our original ancestor. So all this, this understanding is all forgetfulness. All this modern society where these educational systems where they have big universities and students are paying hundreds and thousands of dollars a year to learn complete nonsense. So they can create a society where everyone is equally as crazy or more crazy than they are. So Krishna has given them, everyone, this facility to create a nonsense civilization where people speak nonsense and they do nonsense, and more or less there are nonsense, 
and they award each other prizes for the biggest nonsense. <laughs> Whoever is the biggest clown, he gets the biggest award. <laughs> They dress up like clowns, they act like tra clowns, and they give the clowns the different types of prizes. But for those who want, and if there is any possibility of remembering God, Krishna helps them forget it. But for the devotee, Krishna helps the devotee remember him and understand him, and he helps him forget all the nonsense that he's learned from his previous education. So he's in everyone's heart, he knows what we want, he knows what we desire, and he awards us accordingly. Whatever we want, if we want something in the material world in some form, Krishna will give us the intelligence eventually how to get it. And if we want to get out of the material consciousness and understand him, become aware of how he's working in this material world, from our heart to the Brahma, to the whole universe, to the spiritual world, then Krishna will give us the knowledge and eventually the understanding so that we can become perfect in Krishna consciousness. That we can understand, just like one time I was in 69, Shul probably came to Buffalo where I was in the tent living. So he's talking to one guest, one Indian doctor, his name was Dr. Lau. The Dr. Lau had invited the devotees to come to Buffalo to open a center there. But he was a Paka Mayavadi. No one could convince Dr. Lau that there was a God or any other God besides him. <laughs> he thought he had already taken the post. <laughs> So Prabhupada said, well, if you actually want to know, he was talking to Mr. Lau, and he said, if you want to know, Dr. Lau, if you want to know who your mother, who your father is, then you have to ask your mother. But uh, obviously Dr. Lau must have had some difficulty in his family life. That he couldn't understand what Prabhupada was talking about. <laughs> so he had to repeat it. Prabhupada said, no, if you want to know who your mother is, then you have to ask your father. So if you want to know who God is, you have to ask the Vedas, who are like your mother. Dr. Lau still couldn't understand what Prabhupada was talking about, so Prabhupada repeated it again. If you want to know if, who your father is, then the ultimate authority is your mother. And the Vedas, which are like our mother, they say Krishna is our father. But Dr. Lau still couldn't understand, so Prabhupada said, well, bring him some prasadam. <laughs> if we want to understand that there is we're existing the children are here we're all Krishna's children so there must be a father but this simple logic people can't understand no what do we need a father for <laughs> father big burden I didn't like my father. I don't like God. I don't like, but so why should we have him? Why should there be a God? Who elected him as God? Who wants him? Why doesn't he just go away and leave us alone, even if there was a God? <laughs> and if he is a God, then he should run for election like everyone else. <laughs> and if he gets voted out of office, he should step down in a civilized way. He shouldn't keep on ranting that I'm God, everyone should accept me. And if people don't want him in, in their hearts, he should just leave. He's not paying any rent. <laughs> you know, he should get another. Bodies are cheap nowadays, it is a recession. <laughs> Price. <laughs> he should just leave and leave us alone. But he won't do it. 
So why should we bother with him? Just ignore him. <laughs> just like if you don't like a guest, you just don't feed him. So just ignore him, and maybe one day he'll just leave everyone and leave us alone. So people that are thinking like that, just ignore him, and he'll go away. Or take some intoxication, pretend that he's not there, just like an ostrich. Big animal and big, big body, but little, little head. So when a big animal comes to attack him, he runs and finds a little hole and puts his little head into the little hole, and he thinks, now I'm safe. No one can get me. <laughs> so we think, oh, even if there was a God, let me ignore him and he'll go away. But it's not, that's not the way karma works. They want to ignore the fact that everyone is Krishna's servant, Everyone should respect other living entities. They want to disrespect other living entities by killing animals and committing all kinds of sinful activities. And they expect that there won't be any result. But the result is, even they may not see how God is controlling them, the result in their next lifetime, or even in this lifetime, they become degraded into a lower species of life. So we may deny the existence of God, we may deny the existence of the laws of God, but still we have to act under them. Just like a person in prison, he's declaring he's free. No one's going to tell him to do anything. So he's like that. He's declaring himself free. They have him chained. They're beating him, but he's declaring himself free. So what is the value of your freedom? You're chained. You can't go anywhere. People are beating you. And all you can do is madly claim that you're free. Free to do what? Free to get beaten by the material energy. So people, when they follow Krishna a little bit, Krishna gives them some material ability. He gives them some material wealth and opulence. But if they deny God's existence and then they misuse that opulence, then the result in the next lifetime these things are taken away, and they have to suffer in the lower species of life. But in any case, it's always risky, because as soon as we forget Krishna, then we become subjected to the laws of material nature. And only in the human form of life do we get this opportunity to understand Krishna more in fully, and therefore the perfection of life is to understand Krishna in such a way is that we won't forget him and become entangled in the laws of material nature. We won't fall into such illusion that we actually believe that we're all independent enjoyers and controllers and that we should fight with each other until the last man or woman exists and then they can stand up and say, I won. <laughs> I'm God. There's no one else but me. So that ultimately wouldn't be a whole lot of fun either. Therefore, Krishna says, everything is quite simple. We are souls. Everyone is Krishna's servant. We should follow Krishna's direction. Then we'll realize Krishna, and we'll realize everyone else is Krishna's servant. Then we'll be happy to see that Krishna is the father and that he has a nice big family. And he can maintain everyone. And he doesn't have to get a lot of jobs either. Krishna doesn't have, he maintains all living entities and he's not on unemployment. Actually, he is unemployed, but still he can maintain everyone. So that's quite a, a wonderful thing. Tatasya karyam karanam chavidyate, tatat samasya vyavikastra drishyate, parasya shakti vidaiva shriyate, sabhavaki jnana bala kriyacha. Krishna says, Tatasya karyam karanam chavidyate. I have nothing to do. I'm unemployed. And yet he's able to maintain everyone. Not only that, but he has a secretary, a material energy, doing everything for him. He's unemployed. He has no home in the material world. Practically, he's homeless. He doesn't do anything. And yet he, he has everything done under his direction. He walks and he doesn't walk. He 
sees and he doesn't see, he hears and he doesn't hear. So he's quite a personality. It's good to be interesting to meet him. The supreme magician. He appears and he doesn't appear. He's the unlimited personality of contradictions. So we'll stop there and thank you. Any questions? Okay. Maharaji, so for the fullness is uh, our uh, desire or or it's our uh, condition. I mean, we, we uh, become forgetful because of our desire or we are imposed. No, because of our desire. Maya says, do this and you'll go to hell. And we think, oh, thank you, Maya, you're so kind. Which hell are you going to give me? Well, you can choose your own hell. <laughs> wow, I got a choice. <laughs> I'll take the pink hell. No, 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 you should take the blue one. It goes with your, with your dress. <laughs> okay, I'll take the blue hell. No, we make the choice in Krishna awards us our, our desire. And because we're associating with so many other crazy people like we are, therefore we're in courage. Yeah, take the blue one, it's great. You'll really suffer there like everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my daughter took that blue hell and she really suffered. I'm sure you'll really enjoy it too. <laughs> So because we are in association with people who are encouraging us to go to hell, become materialists or impersonalists, whatever else, therefore we become encouraged. We think, yeah, I'll go for it. It's a good choice. And we associate with the devotees, and they say, no, don't do that, chant Hare Krishna. So that's our, then we can use our desires, our free will properly, and we can chant Hare Krishna make some spiritual progress, and avoid all the problems we would have otherwise created for ourselves by choosing all the wrong things. So Maya offers us opportunities, and as soon as we take them, when we become implicated in them. And then Krishna offers us other opportunities, and we take them, then we'll become liberated. Yes? How can we... Someone says, I don't believe in God. And how can you explain? Well, just tell them I don't believe in you either. <laughs> then you go on to the next person. <laughs> Why worry about someone who doesn't believe in God? Just say, well, we don't believe in you. <laughs> yes. What's that? God believes in him. Maybe. You'll have to ask Krishna. Yeah, Krishna may believe. If you want to ignore God, then God will ignore you. And Krishna gives you, he doesn't completely ignore you, but he'll make the arrangements so the material nature will, will take care of you. So Krishna doesn't directly get involved with people who are ignoring him. Then he essentially ignores them. And therefore, they're simply under the control of the three modes of nature, which Krishna doesn't directly deal with. Although he's aware of everyone's activities, but he doesn't interfere with them. He just makes arrangements for them. Anything else? Thank you very much. Grantaraj Bhagavad Gita Kijai. Srila Prabhupada Kijai. Gaur Primanande Hiro.